Alright guys. Well, obviously I can't stop now. Good lord, it is now, I don't know what time it is, on Wednesday night, August 23rd, 2023. Uh, it was about 12 hours ago, I plowed in to the single most exhaustive and exhausting <coughs> chronicle of the collapse I have ever undertaken. And, uh, good Lord, as, as you know by now, guys, uh, thank you to Yahoo News and Popular Mechanics. I have been led down the, the Doomer path to the single greatest essay I have ever encountered in 15 years of researching, uh, what's going on on this planet, the the uh, unfolding, ongoing, and accelerating collapse of global industrial civilization, humanity, and the planet. And I should not be surprised that the person coming up with this absolute, uh, just, just genius work, just putting it all together for us, uh, would be none other than ecologist William Reese, who I have had the pleasure of interviewing, and I'll put the link to that interview, but William Reese, <coughs> the man has outdone himself, guys, with uh, this uh, grand opus of, <coughs> of collapse from this outfit called, simply called World, World from another outfit called MDPI, not sure who any of them are, but uh, I'm glad they're on the planet, <clears throat> and I will be checking out more of this, but we are going to, uh, finally, we are at the conclusion, the summary and conclusion it has taken me, I have been reading this for, what, over two hours, dividing it up. And the title of this uh, venerable tome by William Reese, The Human Ecology of Overshoot, Why a Major Population Correction is Inevitable. And in the first four parts. We've gone over the introduction, uh, the chapter titled The Nature and Nurture of Overshoot, where we get a better definition of overshoot. Then, of course, uh, the population connection had a video on that. From there, we went to the chapter on energy gradients, Homo sapiens as a dissipative structure. Bill got a little bit into the 50 cent word realm uh, in that otherwise excellent chapter. And then he came back to uh, knocking it out of the park with, that uh, <clears throat> I made part four, the world's response to overshoot. And finally, drum roll please, we have gotten to the bottom of this, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of words. We have reached the summary and conclusions. William Reese's summary and conclusions about the state of the planet in 2023, it's really quite simple. It's really quite simple. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to start out with another one of my heroes uh, who I who declined to be interviewed, I'm sorry to say, this fellow Vaclav Smeal, and we're going to lead off uh, 
the final part five with a quote from Vaclav Smeal. <clears throat> Without a biosphere in a good shape, there is no life on the planet. It's very simple. That is all you need to know. The economist will tell you we can decouple growth from material consumption, but that is total nonsense. If you don't manage decline, then you succumb to it and you are gone. Close quote. Thank you. Vaclav Smeal. Okay, uh, William Reese, give us your really quite simple summary and conclusions. Take it away, Bill. <clears throat> Homo sapiens, like all other species, are naturally predisposed to grow, reproduce, and expand into all suitable accessible habitat. Physical growth is natural, but it is only an early phase in the development of individual organisms. Growth in sheer scale, including population growth, is characteristic of early phases of complex living systems, including human societies. However, both material and population growth in finite habitats are ultimately limited by the availability of essential inputs by the capacity of the system's environment to assimilate often toxic outputs or by various forms of negative feedback as previously listed, growth will cease either by design or disaster. <clears throat> For most of Homo sapiens evolutionary history, local population growth has in fact been constrained by negative feedback. However, improved population health, lower death rates, and the use of fossil fuels, particularly since the early 19th century, enabled a period of unprecedented food and resource abundance. In nature, any K strategic species population enjoying such favorable conditions will expand exponentially. Growth will generally continue until excess consumption and habitat degradation once again lead to food shortages and starvation or disease and predation take their toll. <clears throat> the population then falls back below the long-term carrying capacity of the habitat and negative feedback eases off. Some species repeatedly exhibit this cycle of population boom and bust. <clears throat> Humanity is only a partial exception. The abundance generated by fossil fuels enabled Homo sapiens for the first time to experience a one-off global population boom-bust cycle. It is a one-off cycle because it was enabled by vast stocks of both potentially renewable self-producing resources and finite non-renewable resources, including fossil fuels, which have been greatly depleted. No repetition is possible. No repetition is possible. This is a one 
off. This population boom is going to bust and it ain't coming back again. No repetition of this one-time human population uh, boom bus cycle is possible. As Clugston argues, by choosing to industrialize, Homo sapiens unwittingly made a commitment to impermanence. We adopted a self-terminating way of life. <coughs> <coughs> in which the finite resources that enable our industrial existence would inevitably become insufficient to do so. Uh, the physical mechanisms are simple. Okay, guys, this is not rocket science. The physical mechanisms are simple. Living systems from individual cells through entire organisms to populations and ecosystems exist in nested hierarchies and function as far from equilibrium dissipative structures, which we have been over. Each level in the hierarchy depends on the next level up both as a source for, future, for useful resources, which ecologists call negentropy, and as a sink for degraded waste, which you've probably heard the term entropy. <clears throat> as Herman Daly reminds us, the human enterprise is a wholly dependent subsystem of the ecosphere. It produces and maintains itself by extracting negentropic resources from its host system, otherwise known as the ecosphere, sometimes known as Gaia or Mother Nature, and dumping degraded entropic waste back into its host. It follows that the increasing structural and functional complexity of the human subsystem as a far from equilibrium dissipative structure <clears throat> can occur only at the expense of accelerated disorder, disordering, increasing entropy of the non-growing ecosphere. Indeed, humanity is in overshoot. Global heating, plunging biodiversity, soil and land degradation, tropical deforestation, ocean acidification, fossil fuel and mineral depletion, the pollution of everything, etc., are indicative of the increasing disordering of the biosphere and ecosphere. We are at risk of a chaotic breakdown of essential life support functions. <clears throat> Little of this is reflected in contemporary development debates or in discussions of the population conundrum. The international community's response to incipient biospheric collapse is doubly disastrous. Modern techno-industrial culture's commitment to material growth including continued fossil fuel use, which we heard described as track one in my last video, condemns humanity to the predictably dangerous impacts of accelerating climate change. At the same time, our pursuit of alternative energy sources, 
themselves fossil fuel dependent in order to maintain the growth-based status quo, track two would, if successful, assure the continued depletion and dissipation of both self-producing and non-renewable resources essential for the existence of civilization. And of course, I'm going to break in here. This is what why I say with his track one and track two, it is no longer the frying pan or the fire. Either track we take, we are doomed. We're doomed. It is no longer the frying pan or the fire. Uh, I meant to talk about this more in the last video. What uh, I... I don't want to put words in William Reese's mouth, but I think what he is saying, it is now the frying pan and the fire. We ain't coming out of it, guys. We ain't coming out of it. <clears throat> the mainstream view of population asserts that the growth rate is declining, so not to worry or worry that population decline is bad for the economy. Even the base assertion is controversial. James O'Sullivan points out that the rate of decline has itself declined in this century. She argues that UN demographers have thus persistently underestimated recent global population due to their over-anticipation of fertility declines in high fertility countries closer to 90 million and its ultimate peak is highly uncertain. Renewed negative feedback may well end growth well before the population reaches the UN's expected 10.4 billion in the late 2080s. Do you think so? It is crucial to remember that right or wrong, conventional projections ignore the fact that the ecosphere is not actually now supporting even the present 8 billion people. The human enterprise is growing and maintaining itself by liquidating and polluting essential ecosystems and material assets. In short, even average material living standards are corrosively excessive, yet in 2019, almost a quarter of the global population lived below $3.65 per day poverty line, and almost half, 47%, lived below the U.S. $6.85% poverty line, and the world considers sheer material growth as the means to address this problem. Following this path, following this path, eco-destruction will ramp up, increasing the probability of a self-induced simplification and contraction of the human enterprise. I love how he keeps saying, barring a nuclear holocaust. Uh, I guess we can just put the nuclear holocaust out here in the, in, you know, in the flock of black swans that uh, not even uh, William Reese wants to talk about. So just pretend that the possibility of nuclear holocaust does not exist. So barring that little oops, it is unlikely 
that Homo sapiens will go extinct. Wealthy, technologically advanced nations potentially have more resilience and may be insulated at least temporarily from the worst consequences of global simplification. That said, rebounding negative feedbacks, climate chaos, food and other resource shortages, civil disorder, resource wars, etc. may well eliminate prospects for an advanced worldwide civilization. <coughs> In the event of a seemingly inevitable global population correction, human numbers will fall to the point where survivors can once again hope to thrive within the much reduced carrying capacity of the earth. Informed estimates put the long-term carrying capacity, you know, of this planet at as few as 100 million to as many as 3 billion people. And then he, you know, he cites all those, that debate. <clears throat> it is uncertain whether much of any of industrial high-tech can persist in the absence of abundant cheap energy and rich resource reserves, most of which will have been extracted, used, and dissipated. It may well be that the best case future will in fact be powered by renewable energy, but in the form of human muscle, draft horses, <coughs> mules and oxen, supplemented by mechanical water wheels and windmills. In the worst case, the billion question mark or so survivors will face a return to Stone Age lifestyles. Should this be humanity's future, it will not be urban sophisticates that survive, but rather the pre-adapted rural poor and remaining pockets of indigenous peoples. And we now get to the bottom line. <clears throat> Take it away. William Reese, give us the bottom line. <clears throat> bottom line. Any reasonable interpretation of previous histories, current trends, and complex systems dynamics would hold that global <clears throat> modern techno-industrial culture is beginning to unravel, and that the one-off human population boom is destined to bust. Homo sapiens innate expansionist tend tendencies have become maladaptive. However, far from acknowledging and overriding our disadvantageous natural predis predispositions, contemporary cultural norms reinforce them. Arguably, in these circumstances, widespread societal collapse cannot be averted. Collapse is not a problem to be solved, but rather the final stage of a cycle to be endured. Global civilizational collapse will almost certainly be accompanied by a major population correction. In the best of all possible worlds, the whole transition might actually be managed 
in ways that prevent unnecessary suffering of millions, billions of people, but this is not happening and cannot happen in a world blind to its own predicament. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen, Brother William Reese. William Reese has just spelled it out. Everything that I have been saying, what, for 15 years, uh, you know, down here in this collapse, doomus, you know, collapse of fear, doomosphere, uh, ain't, ain't, ain't happening. We are not going to pull ourselves out of this. Uh, we are going down the toilet. Uh, we are pedal to the metal, frying pan and the fire. We're turning up the gas under the frying pan and we're throwing biomass onto the fire. Humans are clueless fucking morons. We deserve every single thing we get. Everything we get coming our way. We deserve it. It's called karma. Uh, and uh, since uh, William Reese did not wrap it up this way, I will wrap it up. And get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Grab every piece of peach cobbler you can stuff into your fat, greedy, clueless mouth while you still can. This shit show is coming down. The sooner, the better. Bye, guys.